trucking company was hauling a component to a wind generator, and it was a little over height, came through and damaged three of the four steel girders on this bridge. Once we came out and discovered the damage, that's when it was determined that uh, we need to close the structure to any traffic. Sometimes whenever a beam is hit, a steel beam is hit, we can actually come out and straighten the beam and get it back into shape and it will support its intended load. In this case, the beams were severely bent. Those sections had to be cut out and replaced. And so while those beam sections were removed, the structural integrity of the bridge was actually compromised. A couple of the diaphragms were torn away from the beam web. Uh, one of the webs was actually torn. It's not likely the structure would have collapsed under its own weight, but had another oversized or overweight load come through, they could have done some serious damage to the bridge. Typically, they would, they would erect some temporary scaffolding underneath, but they wanted to minimize the impact to US-287 traffic. So that's where they employed this strong back method to actually support the bridge deck from above. And that was really the best form of repair for this structure. This is the first time we've ever employed this type of uh, bridge repair in our district. We would be looking at uh, several months versus several days if we actually had to come in and replace the structure rather than the repairs that we're actually making to the beams. To replace the structure, we're probably looking at uh, 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars, and uh, this repair was completed uh, under 300,000. We're saving a lot of time. This will be open back up to traffic, I would guess, within a week to 10 days. Last week, a group of young engineers came out to view this construction activity. We knew that the sections of the beam had to be replaced, but without the support of the bridge, how do we actually perform that repair? This gets them to think outside the box of what our normal operating procedures or our standard construction activities might be. Anytime you get a chance to come out and view or watch a construction activity that's unique, especially one of this nature, it's going to help you in the future whether it's design related or construction inspection related and making decisions and coming up with plans to solve issues and problems as they come up later on in your career.